My name is Maya, um, also known to the community as Legendary Maya Levin. And when did you get started in ballroom? Um, I started in ballroom when I was 16 years old. Um, so that was like around 2006, 2007 era. I was like 16 going into, um, 16 going on 17. 16 was the year and the age in which I came out to my family and to the world. Um, but 17 was when I actually really got into ballroom. Mm -hmm. And what was the first ball you ever attended? Um, the first ball I ever attended was Solomon's Ball. It was the, um, I don't remember necessarily the name, but we had to return to our original house and it was like up north. Um, I think it was the, it was back to something. I don't necessarily know the name, but um, I was a Bellagio then. And and I was Solomon Infinity. Solomon Infinity. Um, and I was walking, um, I walked drag this. That was the first ever category that I ever walked. That was my original category that I walked when I came into the scene. Okay. Um, before I got interested in um, ballroom. And <laughs> introduced you to the scene, like, let you know that about ballroom community and ballroom culture. So the, the most amazing thing is, um, I, I kind of gravitated towards ballroom. Um, on the strength that when I came out to my family that it wasn't as receptive um, But when I moved back to Chicago at 16, I was kind of going through like a homeless um, Situation and one day I was just walking through Jackson Park and I saw this um, individual his name is Jason um, And he at that time was the mother of the house of Bellagio and Skittles and all the girls and the, the, the big names that we know um, today was a part of that house and it was like you need to come over here to this house And I was like well I don't know nothing about a house I don't know nothing about ballroom or nothing I just knew that I wanted to live my life happy and free um, So if, if I had to say a name I would say the house of Bellagio, Jason um, And all of them introduced me to ballroom Okay and you said your first category was realness Yes What made you want to start ballroom? So I wanted to start voguing because I have a dancer's background. I come from dance. Um, I did uh, J-Set. I did um, footwork, house, house party dancing. Um, but ballroom was a different form of dance for me. Um, but it also allowed me to be creative more. I think realness is a category that I struggle with the most that I feel it puts a lot of um, queer trans people into, into positions of being envious and, and dislike and, and have dislike towards each other um, because ballroom made it into a competition versus embracing um, the beauty of the growth as, as we grow as a woman, as we grow as a, a trans masculine individual. So that's the reason why I really um, progress towards um, both more than real. So, do you feel like the competition in ballroom sometimes like pit you toward, put you against other people in the community? Um, for me specifically, I don't think necessarily it puts me against um, different people in the community. But I think that we are, as as a whole, very competitive, very um driven people to stand as the prominent and the most high person in ballroom. And, you know, I look at it as all fun, all games. You know, this is recreation, but it's also a form of me being able to embrace my talent, me being able to showcase my talent. So therefore, if I'm on the floor with um, one of my sisters and one of my brothers or whatever the case may be, it's in love. Now, however, you do see individuals who take um, a competition into having a bad sense of sportsmanship. Me, myself, I have good sportsmanship. You know, it's all about fun for me. Yeah, you do. I, I see you walk all the time, man. You always win, lose, or draw. You always take it with a smile. Yeah. And you never take it personally. Yeah, life too short to dwell on the things that are supposed to be fun and, and turn them into negative. We, 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 have to ten, we have to change that narrative. When it comes to ballroom, you know, when I came into ballroom, it was about 
um, family. It was about love. It was about supporting you when you had nowhere to go. When your family turned their backs on you, this is what ballroom was positioned for. To be able to give you that safety net of comfort. So I still, all, all, to, to the death of me, is always going to be um, committed to that form of what ballroom was. And the sense of competition, who would you say in your 14 years in, who is your biggest rival? Um, I wouldn't say rivals because I, I don't per se use the word rival, but I would say my most memorable ballroom moments, um, the most energetic, the most um, intense battles, I would definitely have to say my sister, you know, skills and me have always had a, a an amazing resume of battles. Um, most people thought that we were against each other because it was so intense, but we have a competitive side. We evolved. You know, we have uh, an, um, the, the only ball that we walk against each other has been the same talked about ball and battle for years and continuously is to this day. Um, definitely um, Star, um, Alana, me and Alana um, during my time when I was still showcasing myself um, and going through my whole drag era and everything, Alana was the girl to be. But I was the girl right behind her, so we was going tit for tat. Um, and I ended up getting her a couple few times, so I definitely would say Alana, me and Karma, uh, my twin, we have had our, our um, eras to where we was going back and forth. So it's just a number of different people that I can say um, have created an amazing resume of memories for me. Um, not necessarily rivals, but definitely an amazing resume of memories for me. That's awesome. And out of all these memories, what is your favorite win? My favorite win? Wow. Um, not even necessarily like money-wise, but just like yeah, yeah, if yeah. you walk away like that was a moment. Um, I think anytime I win is is amazing to me. And the reason being is because I came from a place of, I was told that I can't do something. I came from a space in my life to where um, people doubted me. And ballroom was a place that it wasn't easy getting to where I am. Being a legend, being a person who has done this for umpteen years, being a person who outside of ballroom has created a space for me to exist in the world. You know, it has not been easy. So I think that anytime I win, whether it's in ballroom, in life, um, I'm, I'm most appreciative of those um, wins. Because the thing about it is, me winning shows that regardless of what people have said about me or said to me, I'm beyond that and I'm better than that. So every win is always amazing to me. That's great. 
And as far as like, uh, you know, the, the haters, the naysayers, people that like just talk down on you, what, what do you think? Because we, we all know like drama is a part of all. Yeah. Shade is a part of all. Yeah. But what do you think? Where, where's the line for you? Because uh, you out there, you got to be competitive. Yeah. You have to be shady to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But where do you think the line is uh, between being too shady and just being having fun? Um, I'm, I'm, I've been a person that I don't like that that term. I don't see it. I don't like that. That is one of the the worst terms that has been created in this community since it was created. And I and, and people can feel how they want to feel about it, but I have an issue with it because no one has the ability, the right, or the audacity to tell someone that they don't see it for them when it was a time that you were not a person that was able to be in the shoes that you are in. I'm the type of person that, even myself, I never had everything and I still don't proclaim to have everything, nor do I want to, to say that I have everything, but I'm going to work for everything that I want. You know, I think that we have lost that sense of um, understanding that ballroom was made off the ability to grow. People expect people to come into ballroom to have it all together. People expect people to come into ballroom to have the labels and the designers. So I don't like the I don't see it individuals. I don't like the individuals who sit on a panel and act stush and look down on a person who is growing just like you. I came from an era and a time to where if I did not necessarily meet the criteria to what was asked of me for that ball, the person who may have chopped me or even a person randomly as a leader would say, come here, let me tell you why. So that I can go back and perfect it or fix it. We don't have that no more. We have a don't run up to the panel ass bitch. Excuse my language, but that's the facts and that's the truth of it all. You have to change the narrative and you have to change people um, who have that, that mindset that they forgot where they are. You are not, you are not greater than the expense that you, that you crafted for your, your label. And we have to be strategic about that. You know, a lot of people utilize these labels as a means to feel empowered to put someone else down. You cannot do that because, see, here's the thing. This is why the Kiki scene was created. Because those individuals who are younger individuals who's inspired by a lot of us, who's in the main scene, were looked down or looked less than on a person who they looked up to. And now they have to create their own platform for them to exist in a culture and in a history that was made for us. That to me is absolutely absurd for us to be able to say that we are legends and icons, pioneers, hall of famers, and the people who paved the way when we can't even walk on our own gravel. That's an issue. Do you think the mainstream and the Kiki should um, coexist or come together or do you think it should stay separated? So, it, it has already happened. I do think that it should not have been um, positioned this way to where we had to even think about coming together. It shouldn't be separation. We have separation enough from the heterosexual community. We have, we have doubt enough coming from women and men who don't understand our lifestyle, who don't understand the platform and the direction that we have been going for years, for centuries. You know, this is not something that just happened yesterday. This is not something that we just woke up and said we're going to create an LGBTQ spectrum. This is something that has been happening. So therefore, a kiki scene and a mainstream should not be two things. It should just be our scene. So, if to answer the question, it has already happened. And the reason being is because the mainstream see the fun that the kiki scene is having. They see the love and the genuineness that they have that they don't have in mainstream no more. So now they want to get back to. When necessarily all you had to do was keep that same narrative. But everybody wants to seem higher and better than the next. And it starts with them putting the use down. And how do you think we can move forward from that? How do you think we can make ballroom better so that it will be more welcoming to the next generation? Um, for me, it starts with people self-evaluating themselves. It starts with people checking themselves. 
And, 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 and when I say people, I mean those senior individuals. Um, when you are taking on titles like legends, icons, pioneers, hall of famers, you are designed and positioned to bring up the next generation in leadership. You are positioned in these spaces um, from your resume and your history and what you have given for them to even see the content on YouTube, the content in ballroom um, DVDs before we even got to YouTube. You have been designed to be able to give them the ability to receive nothing but love, unity, support, happiness, but you are failing them. So it starts with us restructuring our mindset as leaders in titles, leadership in houses, mothers and fathers. Stop trying to have these kids, positioning them to where they're exposed to all different types of drugs and everything, to position them to sex work. Not every trans girl has to do sex work. Not every gay male has to do sex work. Position them, if you feel that they want to, um, to, to coexist in life, help them with a resume. Show them a way before they get a criminal record because they done stole and crafted and everything. Stop positioning them. This is what we were supposed to do. We were given these titles as mothers and fathers. We were given these labels as legends and icons to be able to prevent. This just goes back into when, we, when, when, when it was said um, growing up, I want you to be better than me. Our mothers and fathers told us they want us as their children to be better than them. So me being in a position, if I'm a mother, I want my kids to be better than me. So therefore, I'm going to position better in front of them. I learned from the, my mistakes, but I don't want, I want to prevent you to make my, my mistakes. And that's where it starts. It starts with us as leaders, icons, legends to reevaluate ourselves to make everything much better than what it is. And by you being uh, a leader yourself, what was the biggest lesson you learned from leading your kids or leading your team? Um, I would have to say, the, the, the biggest lesson is I have to have my own ducks in a row. I can't lead someone else if I can't lead myself. You know, a lot of these people um, need ballroom. I don't. I love ballroom. I value it. It has made me to be the woman I am. It has positioned me to be able to speak as fluently as I do. But People dwell on it and they need it. I'm not that girl. I had to understand that when I was growing up and I was 16, 17 and I'm out here fighting and all these other type of things, how can I tell another individual that's not the way to go? Anger isn't the way to go. I was a very angry person, you know, and that was because of my upbringing. That was because the addictions my mom has had. That was because my father was a gang leader and did not accept me and still is a gang leader to this day. And does not and, 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 and did not, but now he do accept me for me being who I am. I was angry. So I had to check myself. I had to self-evaluate myself and kind of put a mirror in front of me and say, do you want to be viewed by individuals as a negative, mean, depressed, dark person? Or do you want to utilize all that you went through? Whether it fail, whether it risen. Whether win, whether lose, do you want to be that person that is an example to others that is growing up under you to look up to them, to show them that you can make it out, especially the trans community. It's so many girls who I have talked to and my phone is always open. I answer my phone, I don't give a damn what time it is. I answer my phone because I never know what that is. So I had to position myself into reevaluating myself in order for me to lead. And that's the reason why now I'm in positions like this to talk about my story. I'm in positions to where I sit at tables outside, again, ballroom, uh, on councils, to speak about what is needed for my community. To where I'm working in positions to creating agencies and things that is going to, pro to produce revenue to end homelessness in the city of Chicago. These are the things that I wanted to be memorized for. So it starts beyond ballroom. It starts with what you, you want to be um, remembered for. And my mother, and, it, and, and it's an emotional piece, but a, a couple days ago, my mom 
had texted me out of nowhere. I had went through some stuff recently, several weeks ago, that was very um, difficult for me to where I went back into this dark place to where I was dealing with my depression and anxiety and my mental health was not the best and I have dealt with this for years. And I'm okay with speaking of that because it's the reality. We have to, to accept the reality. My mom texts me and she apologized for everything that she went through and told me the biggest piece of it all in that text message was, you have a legacy that you have to leave behind. And you can't give up now. Everything that you go through and everything that you have been through has position, positioned you right where you're supposed to be. And I believe that to the fullest, but it was just so emotional for me to hear it come from her because of our history that we have had. But I received it. And that's where it started. It started with things like that. It starts with reevaluating. What do you want to be remembered for? And I wanted to be remembered for love, for unity, support, um, you know, guidance, you know, lived experience. Last question. Mm -hmm. Describe yourself in five words or less. Um, funny, driven, smart, beautiful, creative. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so good.